Hey guys, Mr. Myers is here, and in this video, this is for statistics, I'm going to talk about displays of quantitative data. We're going to look at three specific displays. I'm going to talk to you first about some displays that we use, and then we'll look at a few and we'll go and look at an example. All right, so uh, here we go. Let's take a look. So I've got display univariate quantitative data. So we're only displaying quantitative data for one variable. There are quite a few different uh, types of displays that we're going to use. One of those is a dot plot. So we would just you know, basically put dots with the number of something on the uh, x-axis, and we'll just make dots straight up. Another type is a histogram. Now, a histogram may look like a bar chart, but it's not a bar chart. A histogram is for quantitative data. And notice here that there aren't any spaces in between my boxes. Now, there aren't any spaces unless the data create gaps in my boxes there, my rectangles. So with a histogram, it's very important that you keep them very tight. We've got a number line on the bottom. And if the data create a gap, then that's going to be important for us to take a look at. So again, a histogram is not a bar chart. A bar chart is used for categorical data. Histograms are used for quantitative data. Stem and leaf plot. Now, a stem and leaf plot is uh, we've got here are our stems and these are our leaves. And we also have to know what each of these mean because how do I know it's 15 hours? What, do, what if one, one means 1.1 hours of homework or 110 hours of homework? I need to know what I'm talking about in terms of where my decimal place is, what this bar means. So I would have to put what well, we have a key there. I'll show you an example of how we create one of those. We can also do for two categories, we can do a back-to-back a, uh, a -back stem and leaf plot so we can compare two categories of one quantitative data. I'll show you an example of that one too. The other one that we have for a quantitative is a time plot. Now we're not going to do too much with a time plot, but we will do an activity in at least in my AP stats class. But a time plot is an, a type of quantitative data where we compare quantitative data over a period of time and we look at trends over time so that's not one that i'm going to go over in this video but it is one that we will talk about sometime in the future so what i'm going to do is we'll take a look at some data that i already have and let's see here if i can find my data find my data okay so here i have some data hopefully you can see this on your screen here um, it's it's small. Let me see if I can increase the size of this. Um, there we go. So uh, what I did was I took a survey and I asked the students that took this survey, how many hours of homework or studying do you do per week? And these are college students, by the way. So these are university students, not high school students. And on a scale from one to five, how stressed out are you about the homework in my course of statistics? So what I'm going to do is I organize my data. So the first thing you always want to do is organize your data from least to greatest. So I have uh, everything from 1 to 39 hours of homework. That's a lot of homework to do in a week or studying. Full-time job, huh? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a dot plot. So all I'm going to do for a dot plot is I am going, ooh, that's really big here. So we're going to do histograms, dot plots, and stimuli. So, so all I'm going to do for a dot plot, and let's look at scale of stress because a dot plot is very useful for discrete quantitative data. For continuous quantitative data, I might want to use a histogram. But for discrete quantitative data, a dot plot works very well. And we don't want to have too much data for a dot plot. Um, if we have like 100 points of data, I don't want to use a dot plot. That's going to take me a long time. So all I did was I went to the, num the number of ones, one, two, three, four, so I looked on my I looked on my data here. And again, I'm looking at scale from 1 to 5. So let me go ahead and organize these so I can sort. All right. So I've got um, I look at the ones. 1 2 3 4 5 6 ones. So I'm going to go over here and I'm going to do 1 2 3 4 5 6 ones. I'm just going to put six dots in here. And I'm going to keep going for each of these. So for each of these, I'm going to count how many twos. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Wait, did I do too many? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight twos. Oh, excuse me, eight twos. So I'm going to go eight twos. What I'd like to do is, and except for my threes here, is the leaning pot. It's a leaning tower of threes. Uh, I would like 
my dots to be around the same level. All right, so I don't want them to be um, at, at different levels. And I want my dots to be about the same size. Otherwise, we're going to get too, uh, we might be deceptive with our graph here. So a couple other things that you need to, need to know for a dot plot. We make our dots and we make sure we have our scale in the bottom and we make sure we have our context labeled in our x-axis. In this case, it's the scale of stress of homework in this class. All right, so let's talk about the next one. It's called a stem and leaf plot. And a stem and leaf plot, I'm going to do the hours of study of homework per week. And uh, notice here I have these little stars. What these little stars represent are values from uh, 5 to 9. And the zero, the non-star are any values from zero to four. And these are the second digits because I have two digit numbers in my data. Um, so notice here I have, I sorted this last time. Okay, I have to sort my number. So I've got one, one. That's gonna be zero, one. So let me show you what the key looks like. And again, and not again, but the first thing I'm gonna tell you is the key, the key in my case, I have to put the key down. I'm going to put 2, 3, that's going to equal 23 hours. That's just to tell me that if I put a 3 here, that means 23. Because if I had like data that were like 2300, I might want to say 2, 3 equals 2300. Because I only want one value on this side of my my on my leaves okay two values don't work I could have more values on the stem you know I could have 22 3 which would be 223 but I don't want multiple value I don't want more than one digit in my leaves part if I have a, a huge range of values then I can just leave it as 0 1 2 3 or you know 5 6 7 8 or whatever I can just have um, I don't need these little stars here. I only need these little stars to break up my data. See, I only go from 0 to 3. I only have 0 to 30. So I need to break up my data a little bit more and show a little bit more distribution. So I need to break these up into um, this first one's going to be 0 to 4, and these are going to be 5 to 9. This is going to be 10 to 14, and this is going to be 14 to 19, and so forth. Okay? So it's just a way to split up these data. All right, so I'm going to go here, look at my data. All right, where's my data? Here it is. Where are my data? Okay, so I've got one, one, a two, a three, three. I'm only going to do a few of these because, or I'll finish it out. I'll pause the video and then I'll kind of finish it out, but I'll do a few of these. So I've got a one, a two, and three threes. So I've got a one, a two, and three threes. Let's put them like that. Then I've got a four, so that goes in the next part. And now I start the fives down here. How many fives did I have? I had one, two, three fives. Then I had one, two sixes, a seven, eight, and nine. So two sixes, a seven, eight, and nine. And now I'm going to go to ten. So then I have, I have one two three four tens and two twelves so one two three four tens and two twelves and i'm going to continue and finish this off i'm going to have this as my stem and leaf all right so there's my stem and leaf plot here's my key with context with context up here so i've got to label that all right okay so let's take a look at a back-to-back -back stem and leaf plot and i've already completed the back-to-back -back stem and leaf plot here this case, I'm going to separate them into males and females. And I'm just going to look at the female data. And now I'm going to have a two hours, a four hours, five, 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 six, and so forth. And on the male, I'm going to actually go, I'm going to go this way. So I'm going to have um, one hour, three hour, three hour, three hour, eight hours. And again, I just looked at my data in my table here and I organized them by male and female. Okay, and I want to make sure I have my context. My key, my key does not have to be actual data. It just needs to tell me what's going on. And I want to put on each of these sides here or the columns here of the uh, sides of the back to back. I want to put my categories that I'm going to compare. So there's my back to back stem and leaf. All right. So let's look at a histogram. 
what we're going to do for a histogram, we're going to use something called the left endpoint convention. And that basically just means that whatever data, it's going to go into the left bin. Remember that the histogram is a continuous uh, number line on the bottom. So you, you can't go 0 to 5, 6 to 10. That's not, this is, the interval has to overlap. Yes, I know it seems strange, like, well, wait a minute. Um, 5 is, can't be in both parts. You're right, 5 can't be in both ones. But 5 is going to actually be in the, the first one that comes up. So 10s, if I have any 10s, they're going to go in the first one that comes up. But we're still going to write them as 0 to 5, 5 to 10. So that way I know over here I have a number line, not boxes. And this is not a bar chart. It's a number line on the bottom. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to see how many 0 to 5s I have in my data. So in my data, I had 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 9, 0 to 5s. So I'm going to go over here. I'm just going to put my frequency as 9. And then I'm going to see how many 5 to 10s I have. So 5, five to 10, except, remember, I'm not including 5. 5 actually went into the 0 to 5. So now I'm just looking at 6 through 10s. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 also. So I'm going to go ahead and put 9 here, and I'm going to continue to do this for the rest of these data. Now that I have the frequency down, I've got a total of 34. What I'm going to do is find the relative frequency. And remember again in the previous video, I talked about that relative means finding the percentage. So I need to find the percentage of each of these. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the frequency and divide it by the total number, which is 34. And so here I'm going to have about 26.5%. I'm going to do that again for each of these. All right, 7 out of 34 is going to give me 20.6%. And I'm going to keep doing this for each one of these. Now, I'm going to stop right here because I noticed that I have a 2, a 1, and a 1. So I'm going to do the 1s first. And that's going to give me 2.9%. These are the same. Notice here I ended up with a gap, so that's okay. And then I'm going to call this 5.9% because I'm just going to add everything up and subtract 100. These must add to 100. You cannot add them to 99.8. It has to be 100%. So what I would do is I would do a few here, I'd do all of them, and then just the last one, the very last one that I have, I'd subtract by 100 to, find, to fill that in. All right, so now I'm going to take those relative frequencies and I'm going to draw my boxes here on my histogram. So for 0 to 5, my first bin, my first bin 0 to 5, which is a rectangle, I'm going to go up to 26.5%. I'm going to draw a box. Then my second bin is going to be the same thing. Then I'm going to go to 20.6%, then 14.7%, then 5.9%, 2.9%, a gap between 30 and 35, and then 2.9% again. Make sure you have your units and everything, your context on the bottom. This is relative frequency, so we're talking about percentages. It only has to go up as high as you need it to go up for these. And then we have our histogram centered there, all right? So there are three types of graphs, displays. We have a relative frequency histogram, a back-to-back -back stem and leaf plot for two categories, or a stem and leaf plot if we're looking at one variable with one category, and dot plot, all right? There we go, guys. Bye.